Yo, what is going on guys? It is Midnight bringing yet again another video on Fairy Tale. Now in today's video we're going to be talking about Midnight and Evergreen more as a unit. Obviously last video was a summoning video for Midnight but this time I'll be talking about the unit, his skills, is he good as well as Evergreen, her skills, is she good. Um, and then after that I'll be ranking them on the tier list that we made in the last week I think it was. Um, just placing them in the PvE tier list just so you can get an idea of where they would sit. And I just want to say as well, I will be making a PvP tier list now that Peak Contest has been out. Um, I'm going to do it probably in the next four or five days. I've got a group of people, a group of top players from our Peak Contest and uh, from our servers that are all going to uh, contribute to it. So it's not going to be just me making it. And we're just going to release that probably at the end of the week once the peak contest is over and we've kind of experimented with a few different units and seen how they perform in that peak contest but um, without further ado let's just get straight into it so I am going to start with Midnight since I do actually have him as a unit obviously so skill preview so Midnight is a pretty strong unit I would say um, let me get off away you don't want to see away so Midnight is a pretty strong unit. Um, I wouldn't say he's one of the best units in the game, but he's definitely up there, probably in the top five, maybe definitely top 10 um, in PvE. Um, but yeah, anyway, so he's a physical power unit and he does ranged attacks, as you can see here. So he's uh, basic attacks are literally just free range attacks, nothing special there. It does pierce by the looks of things, like enemies from behind, which is pretty cool. He's skill 1, if I just uh, hover over this, summons a black hole and it pulls enemies towards the center of it and then kind of pushes them back after that. Um, it does pretty good damage as well, so I'll show you. You can see it pulls them in and then it kind of like explodes, so it does a bit of damage. He does inflict this uh, status effect called pain, which I'll show you what that does in a moment, but I'll show you his skills first. His skill 2 is arguably considerable uh, to Jalal's skill 2, maybe not as strong. But essentially it pulls enemies in and they move 80% slower in that zone. So essentially they're stuck inside of it. Unlike Jalal's move where they can move, this one they can actually move and still attack you. But it's still really good because it pulls enemies in. It lasts for quite a long time and inflicts pain and reduces movement speed. So really good there. His third skill allows him to basically like an AoE attack. But he can't be attacked. Like he can't be selected to be attacked whilst he's using this skill. So I'll show you here. So he does this, um, which is actually a really good skill. It does loads of damage when you actually get to use it in a fight. And has quite a bit of big range. In PvP, obviously I know this isn't a PvP one, but in PvP that's really good because it makes it so that the focus is off of him. And if you've got tanky teams with him, then they'll the enemies will focus on the tanks and Midnight can just do some damage in the background. His ultimate does a huge amount of damage, like actually does big boy damage and it kind of pulls enemies in so i'm going to use it here and then pushing them back so it pulls enemies in and pushes them back and does big damage you're just gonna have to take my word for it um so overall his kit is quite good at manipulating the enemies in what position they're going to be you know you've got um one skill that pulls enemies in you got one skill that pulls enemies in and keeps them in you got one skill that makes it so that they have to leave him alone and then one skill that pulls them in and pushes them back overall he does have quite um, a good kit I would say um, in PvE I'll, obviously I'll talk I'll do I'll, I'll, I'll stutter in my life away I'll add him and uh, Evergreen to the tier list at the end I'm going to show Evergreen first but before I do that let me is it here that I can do it no where is it let me get out of here so I can show you his passive abilities so his leader skill is that of Urza's it allows him to increase your skill cooldown. I've currently got him tier 5, but if you get him tier 6, you'll get 15% skill cooldown if you have him as your leader. Um, it's the exact same as, uh, what's her name, Urza. It's not increased even though he is SSR. It's still the same. So if you have Urza, she can be replaced now by Midnight, which is what I've done. And his passive skill makes it so that you get reduced darkness defense by 0.5% for 12 seconds up to 30 stacks. If you get him to 5 star, then this goes up to 1.3%. So you're looking at what, 39%, uh, I believe 39% um, defense down, dark defense. So this is good combined with uh, Jose when he comes out, Mira Jane when she comes out, Jalal. 
and they're pretty much the three best units. I'm going to be making a team with him, Jalol, and Mirajain when I get her, just because he's going to lower their defense, Mirajain's going to lower their defense, and Jalol can just pop off. And if you get him six star, I mean, obviously this video isn't going to, this tier list isn't for six star units, just because I haven't got any units six star yet, so I don't know how the feature works, but once I do get that done, then I'll kind of go through that. Um, but yeah, you can just see some of these skills here. I won't get into too much of this because, as I said, this video is more of a five star and below tier list. Because I feel like majority of players are going to have five star, four star, and below. You know, not many people are going to have six star SSRs. It does cost quite a bit. I think the closest I've got is Juvia. And as you can see, I still need five more copies of her just to get her five, uh, six star. Um, but yeah, that's Midnight. Now we'll go over to Evergreen. Now. Let's go show you her passive skills first. So her leader skill will increase wind defense, which not very good um, in my opinion. You know, it's going to be a high amount once you get her to tier six. It's not an amazing leader skill, but at the same time, you know, it can have its uses against certain enemies, especially in the, the palace when you fight, um, what's his name? Eregor. And I guess you could use her as a leader if you're fighting the Ikaruga team in peak contest as well. So that's pretty good. Her... Um, Skill here, her passive skill is Evergreen skills and basic attack deal additional magic damage equal to 12% at level 1 um, if they are petrified or fall down. And uh, yeah, let's go through her skills. So her first skill is a is, is actually quite a good skill. Now, I actually think she's quite underestimated because of this skill. Her first skill has a 6 second cooldown and if you see this, you, can, you do like an attack but you kind of like dodge at the same time. So this could be pretty good in like certain modes. It is a shame that she only does go around the right side. Like you can't really go left side. She always goes clockwise. Um, so yeah, that, that's skill one. It, the thing that's good about the skill is obviously because it's a dodge, it does quite a bit of damage and it's, you know, a six second cooldown. So like, you know, combine this with some skill cooldown skills and she could probably pop this like non-stop in a arena which is actually pretty good. Her skill 2 is really good for teams that you plan on doing dodge with. Um, it lowers the enemy's hit rate by 20% for 8 seconds. And hit rate basically means their chance of hitting you so you'll have dodge. So if you have Racer on your team for example or Cobra, you can just pop this and you're less likely to get hit by the enemies that she does hit with this skill. And it does move her forward as well. Um, one of my guild mates, my guild officer, is probably the only person I've seen that's actually summoned for Evergreen and built her. And from what he's told me, he, he likes to do skill 2 when he's in close range, skill 1. Which I think is quite a good combo, especially since when you get in close with them with this, not only are you going to be less likely to get hit from this dodge skill here, but you're going to get less likely to be hit by the enemy as well. Her skill 3 is uh, a petrify skill, so essentially it just does... Um, damage and then petrifies them which is essentially a stun they can't move you can see they get petrified they can't move and obviously with her passive she does more damage to petrified units granted the skill only does petrify for 1.3 seconds i don't find that to be amazing but you know who am i to judge i don't have the unit well built um, and her last skill is um just an aoe damage skill that has um obviously a bit of control immunity as well so you can see here she does some pretty big damage, AoE attack, and kind of pushes enemies back so you can kind of take less damage from that as well. Not to mention she is an agility magic unit, so as well. Overall, Evergreen is probably weaker out of the two overall in terms of PvE and PvP, but both units are, I would say, arguably good. Um, the only downfall that I would say with Evergreen as well at the minute is with agility, you have Ikaruga, and I guess Mistigan is pretty good as well. So she's got competition for being like one of the better agility units, you know, whereas Midnight in the power slot until Luxus and Mirror Jane comes out. Oh no, not Luxus, sorry, until Mirror Jane comes out, um, him, Hot Eye and Mirror Jane are just like top tier. Like the power units in this game are actually like top tier, I'm not going to lie. Like the only ones that aren't really good is, I guess, Gildas are quite underwhelming and Elfman, but you know, for the most part, all the power units are pretty good. Um, but anyway, that's um, all the units there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the video, just go to the tier list and I'm going to add them on. I am going to make some changes to the tier list whilst we're on it as well um, because there's some things I would like to amend and address. 
so I'll be back once I get that done so just bear with me two sec okay so we're back here um, what I'll do is I'll add the two new units onto the list as well as I want to make a few changes because there are some units that I actually think deserve a little bit more of a spotlight and I also want to add one more tier um, above add a row below we'll make it SS oh no they've done it the other way I would do that and what is going on right so we're going to make an ss tier and that is strictly for a few units so i just wanted to do this because there are some units that i think are i've been a bit harsh on in the c tier and in the b tier as well as the a and i do feel like hot eye needs to come down a little bit now um now that midnight is out as a power unit so midnight first of all would go in s tier with hot eye these two would probably stay here I think Wendy still is SS tier. Ikaruga is still SS tier. You have to ignore my little text message I got there. Um, Ikaruga is still uh, SS tier as well as Jalal. These three units are definitely top tier. Wendy more so just because she's like one of the few healers in the game and if not the best healer in the game, which is actually big for PvE. Um, she'll be my first six star as well. I think um, Makarov needs to go in S tier and I do believe Mistigan wants, uh, should be in S tier. Brain, I think, needs to go in A tier as well as Racer. Cobra, I still find it very, very lackluster. To be honest with you, I don't find him to be amazing as a unit. Evergreen, I think she's kind of sat between A and uh, S tier. She's probably more A tier, if anything, like probably something like this. Let me let me re re rearrange it. So as is definitely at the back. Racer is actually really good now that she's out. That you can kind of combine those two as well as um, Cobra. You've got a fairly good dodge team there. Brain is, I think, I severely underestimated him. His beam attack skill that he has is, it does so much damage, it lasts for so long, and you push the enemies back for so long time that they can't actually push you as well. Obviously, we spoke about Evergreen. I think Juvia is A tier still. If not, you could probably swap her with Mistigan. I don't really know. Actually, do you know what? I think maybe like this. I feel like there's not enough wisdom characters, so Juvia should probably get a little bit more benefit of the doubt for that reason alone, just because, you know, if you need a wisdom character, then you really the only options are Cobra, her, or Wendy, to be honest. So I think um, an agility slot you've got covered now by Evergreen and uh, uh, Ikaruga. So I'd probably say that this team, uh, this is how I'd arrange these people up here. Now going down to C tier, I think you need to go up, you need to go up, and I believe you need to go up. I think this is pretty, and you know what? I've underestimated Biscuit a lot um, in PvP. She's very good as well, but you'll that'll be a whole different tier list. I think this makes a lot more sense now. I still think these four need to stay down here. Elfman, I think, is quite underrated as well. He's got quite a good kit, but no one's really built him, so we can't really speak on that too much. The only other one down here that could potentially go up is maybe Aragor, but again, there's just... There's just other strong units that are, are wind. Um, so like he would probably be like higher C tier, but for the most part, this is how the tier list I would say would be looking now. Now this isn't in any particular order apart from maybe these like top three slots, you know, these three slots here, maybe like in order, you know, you could debate these two around here, but yeah, that's kind of how I'd see the tier list as it stands now. As for the next unit that comes out, we are unsure. We've just had Evergreen with a very short banner on our server. Midnight ends in like six or five days or something like that. And we've now got a racer banner instead of Evergreen's one. I believe because our server is coming to, by the time Midnight goes away, the next week after that will be our fourth week in the game. I believe that we will be getting one of Mira Jane or Urza, as well as one of these three, possibly even two. I really hope not two of them because if we get like, you know, Jose, Angel or Angel Luxus, whatever, and Mira Jane and Urza, that's toxic. Like, you're not going to be able to summon all your characters. I personally really don't want any of these characters, any of these three characters here to be coming out. I want it to be these two or one of them, just so that I can save my gems, because after that midnight summoning, I want to get Luxus at least four star, and I want to get the 20 summons for Mira Jane or Urza. Um, I will be summoning for both, because I feel like you must. But... One thing I will say, because I saw someone comment in one of my videos fairly recently, is they're saving for Mira Jane. They're going to try and get her six star. 
Um, what you need to understand with the, the banners for these two units here is they're very unique in the sense that it is a bit more of a pay to win banner. You'll get about four to five summons free to play from just logging in and doing uh, events, I guess, for that week. But you get about 20 summons that you can buy with gems. And that's it. The gems, uh, the summons cost 680, I believe. So times that by 20, you're looking at almost about 14,000 gems just to get the 20 summons. So you only be able to summon for these two units 25 times, 24 times, unless you spend physical money, like actual cash to get more summons. And one good thing I will say about this is if you get the unit, you get them four star from the get go, which is amazing. So what you need to understand if to get them five and six star, you're going to have to be spending real money. Saving gems is not going to be possibility unless you wait for this banner to come back out again and again. But by the time they release the banner again, you'll get Natsu, you'll get Grey, you'll get Minerva, you'll get, you know, the second one of these two. But I believe at the end of the month, I think these banners might be a monthly thing. If I'm honest with you, it would make sense. You know, at the end of the month, they bring out a really good banner for the really good units. But, you know, don't take that seriously. That could be all fake. Um, but once I get news on who the next banner is, I'll let you guys know and I'll upload a video on it. As I said, stay tuned for the PvP tier list video because that is going to help you a lot in Peak Arena. As it stands right now, this is a PvE tier list. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully it's helped and take care and peace out.